Happy holidays, everyone. Still in the thick of it over here, but I just wanted to do a little video that kind of updates an old video where I talk about recording in machine with live effects. There's a couple settings that have changed and work a lot better. So let's go through that. And this applies to any kind of situation where you want to hear effects as you're recording. So guitar is an obvious one and using guitar rig is really special because it allows you to have guitar rig on a separate group. We're gonna have all of our sounds on another group running through that one guitar rig. So you could have a whole bunch of different guitar samples that you've recorded all mapped out onto different pads. And then those would all be outputting to our guitar rig effect. And the cool part about that, of course, is then you can change the sound of the processing on the guitar afterwards. I'm also gonna show you how you can do this live so that you can hear it as you're recording it, which I think is an essential part. And that's just one little setting that we have to change. So make sure you watch this video if you're into recording any kind of audio and want to hear the effects. So. I'm gonna hook up my guitar. I've got it running into my audio interface. The same thing would apply if you had your guitar plugged right into the back, if you're using the audio input on your machine. So the setup goes as follows. We're gonna use this first group here just to be our effects. And we're gonna use a different group to have our samples on it. Maybe our sliced up guitar chords, or you could have you know eight bar phrases of riffs or something like that. The reason we're gonna do that is, is we're gonna route the entire output of another group into our first group, which has our guitar rig on it. So on this first group, we put guitar rig. All we need to do is go to the first sound slot and go to the plugin and hit the plus button. Make sure we choose type effect. And we're gonna go to uh, VST3, native instruments, and we'll go to guitar rig seven. So in order to make this whole connection live, and this is gonna be a little bit different than a previous video I made on this whole topic, now I can go over to group B and on this one here at the group level, we're gonna hit the channel button. And in the software, all you have to do if you don't have the machine hardware, so this is the channel button and this is the plugin button. So anytime I switch between those two on the hardware, you know that's what, I, what I'm meaning in terms of the software. So on the channel settings, we need to make sure that our audio on this whole group is gonna go as a whole to A1S1 or the Guitar Rig 7 group. So if I do it on hardware, just right here, just go to A1S1. And now what will happen is any audio on this group is gonna go through that Guitar Rig, which means you could have totally different chords and loops that you've created, and all of them are gonna route through that one effect on group one. So the next thing I need to do is go over to the sound level right here, and we're gonna take our source, or we're gonna hear what we're doing from the audio interface. And this is how you get to hear everything live. So with this audio source right here, if I set that to N1L, now we are hearing the guitar through Guitar Rig. I don't have anything set up on Guitar Rig yet. And before I do anything, I should probably tune it. So let me just tune it up here. And you can see because we're live, it's actually running through Guitar Rig and you can tune. Otherwise you can't tune. Okay, so the guitar is all tuned up. Let's go choose a preset. And I think this one will work nicely. Just for now. So a nice simple guitar rig patch. Now I can go over to group B. And this one is ready to record on. So I could go and just record a whole bunch of single one-shot samples and have those all throughout this one group. But what I think will be a little bit easier in this case is to record a whole bunch of chords and then just slice them up in the sample slicer. So to start recording, now I'm gonna go over to sampling and I need to choose you know, how long I wanna record for. So in this case, I wanna record for free. I wanna record for free. And I'm gonna leave it on sync after a bar of counting, it starts recording. Source is gonna be external mono. Otherwise you're gonna get guitar only in your left speaker. Then I hit start and I start recording. And I can go through and I can slice these up now. So I'm gonna to go to slice and we'll go to detect and we'll crank the sensitivity down. And then I'll just get through. Don't need that slice there, so I'm going to remove it. A couple of uh, extras in here that I don't need. So I've got all my slices. I'm gonna hit apply and put them all back onto this group, group B, and then hit okay. 
And then now we go back to the plugin and we're going to be able to hear our different samples all going through Guitar Rig. <laughs> But you can hear they're all blurring over top of each other. So I'm going to go to pad mode. I'm going to go select all. And then we're going to go to choke group. And we're going to say choke group one. So that they now cut each other off. So let me just put in a really simple beat. So I've got a beat in there, so now I can go and play my chords. Let's put that in. And now the beauty of this, of course, is that we can go back over to our first group, which has guitar rig on it, and we can try any other preset. None of that is set in stone because all of our samples are just kind of these raw guitar samples that don't have any processing on them at all. So let's try, sure, underwater. Let's see what that sounds like. So it's pretty simple, really, but it's a beautiful way to work and it means that you have always got this control over your guitar amp afterwards. The other thing it means is that any chords that you kind of cut off with samples are still gonna have this reverb tail, right? As opposed to a guitar sample that's just got guitar baked in. So I hope this helps some of you out there. Remember, this is not just for guitar, it's for any kind of effects. So let me know in the comments if this is helping you out. And if you have any other questions about this kind of process, definitely hit me up down there. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.